Hello everyone, my name is Nahla Salem and I'm here today to tell you how to build a machine learning product team. First, a little bit about myself. My specialty is machine learning product management. In the past, I've helped set up machine learning and product teams, uh, mostly in Toronto startups and mostly in enterprise uh, product management. My uh, current uh, position is a senior product manager in Yelp, where I'm helping build out a marketing analytics practice. My past customers include Fortune 50, uh, manufacturing conglomerates, United Technologies Corporation, as well as AS Watson, which is the largest health and beauty retail group in the world. Um, in the past, I've also done software development and consulting. I have a master's in business analytics as well as an EMBA. However, I would like you to uh, not worry too much because you do not really have to have a master's in analytics or data science to benefit from this presentation. So this presentation will be geared towards product leaders and tech leaders who would like to answer the question of should we start a machine lear learning team and how do we uh, go about it because of my background it will mostly be relevant to startups or medium-sized companies who have some sort of core product that could or um, not necessarily include machine learning. So you're either looking to add machine learning from scratch or to scale a teeny tiny team of uh, maybe one or more uh, data science people. I'm going to tell you, first of all, what machine learning is. Where should you start? Because this could be a daunting question to many. Uh, mini crash course of machine learning for product managers. And then I'll look at uh, the question of building a machine learning team from three axes, who will build, how to build, and what to build. We'll talk about tips for starting your first machine learning features, as well as pitfalls to avoid. Let's get started. What's machine learning? Well, I can tell you that it is not this. It is not artificial intelligence that's going to take over the world. There is a lot of hype uh, going around machine learning uh, that I would like to dispel. And uh, surprisingly to me, the uh, question I get most often is, what's the difference between machine learning and data science and AI? Well, let me tell you that you do not really need to worry about this. Uh, for the most part, these are uh, very technical or academic differences. For the sake of uh, what you want to do with this presentation uh, of starting a machine learning team, just choose a name and be consistent and use it uh, internally and externally to avoid confusion. And I'm going to be using machine learning today. So. What machine learning is, to oversimplify it, it is using data, processing it, in order to understand the world and then make a decision to uh, predict a future uh, that is specific to a certain business problem. So that would involve capturing large amounts of data, and the processing would include finding trends in this data, uh, and hence the need for large quantities so that you can get the right trend and uh, not over uh, fit, uh, for example. And then use that decision for a specific uh, uh, business problem and, and defining the problem uh, and what you want to do with the result is the most important part. So machine learning is ubiquitous in our life right now. You have probably used it even if you hadn't realized. So examples for machine learning systems that are out there you probably used are spam alerts. So that's a decision that is made for an incoming email uh, based on previous historical emails, uh, including spam and non-spam, to issue an alert for a specific email. Netflix 
uses your watch history as well as that of millions of others to give you recommendations for things to watch. It usually works very well. And you could have something like a sales call be uh, transcripted into text, which would involve a discipline of natural language processing uh, a subset of uh, machine learning. Andrew uh, Nguyen is a thought leader, uh, really, in the space. He is also the co-founder of Google Brain, Cloudera, and, and an academic. And he uh, puts it very well in terms of describing how the future is machine learning. He says, AI is the new electricity. Just as electricity transformed almost everything 100 years ago, today I actually have a hard time thinking of an industry that I do not think AI will transform in the next several years. Uh, those of us who have been in the industry uh, long enough will remember the days in which CTOs and CIOs were asking themselves whether they should move to the cloud. Now this is a no-brainer. And uh, in the last couple of years, this is the, the same thing that's been happening with machine learning. So where should you start? I think you should start with the following question of, should we get a machine learning team in our company? And as good product managers are, I would like to ask people who approach that question with a bit of skepticism. And that's because more often than not, um, I see people rushing into the hype. Uh, and I think more thoughtfulness is needed to answer that question. And I'm going to give you some helpful questions to ask yourself in order to decide. So. You have to, to be very clear on what your value proposition is and whether, and then ask yourself whether it can be enhanced by machine learning. Ask yourself about your use cases and whether they could use, um, make use of predictive power. And then ask yourself if you have the data, even if the answer is no, this th th doesn't necessarily shoot it down, but that would help you understand the following question, which is what are the costs and what's the ROI? And you need really to educate yourself. You need to uh, know just enough about it in order to start. And one good resource is actually Andrew Nguyen, who I think is great in terms of explaining a very uh, technical concepts very well to people who do not have a strong technical background. He has a Coursera uh, course called AI for Everyone, which could be a good, a good start. Uh, point is get help and, and do some um, homework in order to educate yourself and, and your team. So machine learning for PMs. This uh, could be a presentation in and of its own. Uh, so I'll, I'll hone on on some things that, from my experience, are useful. Where the first question is, are machine learning products different? Are they different from other software products? Um, well, it depends on, on how you look at it. Uh, so, uh, uh, some, something I see happening often is a machine learning uh, or a machine learning team getting special treatment, which is not necessarily conducive of the productivity that we want to see in our teams. I think we uh, should look at machine learning. My philosophy, that's my philo personal philosophy. We should look at machine learning as just another technology and be thoughtful about the product value that we want to um, uh, uh, give to our customers. However, there are some differences that I will highlight now in terms of the development life cycle that are indeed different from your quote unquote regular software development life cycle. First and foremost, uh, as I alluded, you have to start with formulating a, a problem. And if you don't get that right, then the rest of the steps are not really going to work out well for you. Um, and then you ask yourself, based on the problem, what's the data that can help me answer uh, this uh, problem or solve it, rather? Um, and you will need with your team to uh, understand the data and do uh, pre-processing uh, 
uh, etc with the aim of finding out do, doing feature engineering which is essentially finding out what are the elements that affect the decision that we're trying to reach and then you will build the model uh, trade the model on the data that uh, uh, you have provided earlier test it and then tune the model so if you've been paying attention you will notice that this development life cycle un unlike maybe others you've seen in your past is cyclical and that's ex exactly the point you with machine learning rarely get it right from the first time and you need an iterative pro process in order to sometimes even answer the question of can we solve this problem using data and machine learning but more often than not the the iterations are going to include things like oh we need more data or we need to go and review the features that we have uh, defined or we need to keep tuning the model until we reach a performance that we're happy with and in terms of model performance this is really what I think the the most partnership between product and data science needs to happen and where if you're as a PM going to spend time on education this is where you need to spend time not so much on the inner workings of a model but spend time understanding the things that I have here which we won't have time to uh, get into uh, in details but essentially the ways in which you can assess a model's performance if you're a technical product manager or a technically oriented product manager then you will have conversations with your data science team regarding the iterations that we just talked about when to stop and guide them with how to conduct the iterations in a way that optimizes for uh, the business goal so go and educate yourself on things like um, confusion matrix and why saying a model accuracy is simply not enough to describe a model's performance entirely um, you will uh, um, perhaps guess that a model's accuracy of say 85 percent is better than 70 percent but then accuracy an accuracy metric is uh, doesn't give you the full picture of a model's performance and spend some time understanding why that's the case and how you can better make decisions around the uh, choice of models all right so let's now approach the axis of who is going to build and if you're just starting this is going to involve hiring people to work on machine learning uh, typically that's going to involve data scientists as well as machine learning engineers so a data scientist is the person who's going to build out the model a machine learning engineer generally speaking is the person that's going to operationalize the model so that will involve making the data available for the model and then making the results available inside your uh, product what to look for in my opinion is um, a very good focus and understanding of the business aspects and the business goals that you can use machine learning to serve um, more importantly for the data scientists you, you will probably find a lot of people who are good with the theory but the application is what you would want to focus on in the hiring process look also at people's backgrounds Some, someone coming uh, fresh out of academia is going to be different from someone coming from a um, well-established company and spent and spent years there someone from a startup for example will tend to be scrappier as those who work in in uh, startups would know um, uh, as for uh, uh, the interview process uh, I think a very good way to go about it is to present the candidates with a business problem and then see how they're going to approach it and then work together in a collaborative manner because that's going to simulate how things play out in real life. Um, unlike the picture of the interview we have here, it should be an interactive collaborative process. As for the machine learning engineer, they're 
interview process is going to be engineering oriented, but you still need to measure whether or not they have a good understanding of machine learning uh, concepts as well. One pitfall that I've seen uh, many companies fall into um, is this dilemma of if you're starting a machine learning team and you do not have in-house experience, um, how do you then assess candidates? And for that, I highly suggest getting outside help. Uh, you can you know, fall on your network and see if someone can help you um, or get some consultancy done for you in, in order to guide the interview process. Um, but do, don't try and do it on your own uh, because this is a complex discipline and not knowing enough to judge people um, might not give you the best ability to judge uh, candidates. And finally, since uh, we're for the most part working uh, remotely, don't forget the uh, social aspect of building out an, a new team in a remote setting and try to compensate for the lack of face-to-face uh, -face interaction. All right. So team structure, this is something I'm very passionate about. I could go on and on about, so I'll, I'll try to be brief and uh, make an important point that I also see uh, very important. So uh, technical people tend to gravitate based on their skills. And uh, when it comes to machine learning, this is not any different. So a setup that I've seen in many companies is they start out a machine lear learning team as a separate machine learning team, which is separate from uh, uh, maybe the multiple product development teams that, that they have. And um, this does not give you uh, the best performance. It, it results in a siloed team that is not connected to the business, is not connected to the priorities, is not connected to the goals. And um, uh, very often I've seen companies do that and then they reach a point where, where they realize that uh, they do need product help and then uh, they start adding a product manager to the mix, but then um, that still doesn't give them the optimal setting. And the optimal setting, I think, is what uh, we've seen in the Spotify model and really uh, what is the model in many other companies, at least if you boil it down to the basics, which is having an autonomous product development team that includes all the required skills uh, to push a feature to production including uh, data science. So a, a friend I have in, um, who worked in Netflix mentioned that uh, they have data scientists embedded in product teams. So those would be working on product problems uh, as per the team they're, they're in. However, uh, they, they do have a separate uh, machine learning team, but uh, that team services general requests that can come from even outside the, the product teams in the company like finance. And, and, and that's a good model that you know, straddles uh, the benefits of both setups. Um, however, if you just rely on a separate product uh, uh, machine learning team, then inevitably that team is going to operate more like a service desk. Uh, they will have a hard time prioritizing, it, it might end up being a first come first serve basis which is again suboptimal because you always want prioritization to be connected to uh, uh, business goals you want the people who are working on code to be connected to how that code is going to be used and the only way of doing that is to be embedded in the product team that's working on that uh, specific problem now the obvious elephant in the room is if you're starting, you will not have uh, the capacity to embed a data scientist in uh, the couple of, or more uh, product development teams that you have. And uh, that's fine. It is okay to start out with a separate machine learning team, but then you have to compensate for the things that I mentioned by uh, perhaps creating uh, uh, dotted line teams, tiger teams, however you name it, 
have a data scientist be embedded with a product team for the duration of anywhere between a sprint and a quarter, depending on your needs. But do your best to compensate for uh, not having an embedded uh, team. Okay, so how, how then should you go about building uh, machine learning features? So we've, we've seen the process and, and how it is different. In, and, and then in order to work with that difference, what is uh, very important is for you to educate and educate and educate your stakeholders and uh, internally in your company. I've, I've done in companies that I've worked in presentations like this, set expectations, uh, have people be aligned at least on a conceptual level on the different development cycle, the fact that it needs more time uh, and includes uncertainty sometimes to the point of um, uh, failing to build a model that actually improves the user experience and you only know that after spending iterations and and spending time uh, so so find a good balance between setting expectations and not being too pessimistic uh, but but i found it very important uh, because sometimes people have an expectation that machine learning is a magic wand that's going to solve all the problems that we have been moving from quarter to quarter into the future and unable to, to solve. And uh, generate artifacts, uh, spread the word, use your company's um, wiki and, and whatever tools you have at hand for uh, internal education. All right, so on uh, the question of what to build, I think, an ideal setup is to have uh, some sort of research roadmap that precedes your regular roadmap or your feature roadmap. So a, re a research roadmap would include uh, working on models and doing proofs of, con uh, of concept. And then a feature roadmap that makes use of machine learning will include the actual building of features that use those models, the uh, uh, productizing, and sometimes also the scaling, because when you initially build a model, you'll build it on a subset of the data, and then with the help of machine learning engineering, you will scale that uh, to production size data um, uh, after the model is found to be successful. So I, in the past, I've done both. Uh, uh, we have had Research roadmaps, in addition to feature roadmaps, maintained separately. Um, when you're starting out, you'll probably not do that, uh, but at least do it in a um, in the lines manner in which you have one roadmap, but you uh, plan by having research ahead of the actual development of a machine learning feature, and uh, this gives you the best productivity because. It gives you a, a practical tool to deal with the uncertainty we talked about in terms of building machine learning features. And at the same time, it, it gives efficiency in terms of using resources because the um, data science work is going to be very heavy in the modeling stage. But then in the uh, productizing stage, the machine learning engineering work will be heavy and the data science work work will start to wind down. So if you plan it well ahead of time, and at that point have another research uh, problem for the data science uh, to work on, data science team or data scientist, then um, they will work on it and then make it ready for uh, the next chunk of time for the feature development to take place and so on and so forth. Okay, so especially if you're going to use machine learning to automate a decision that's been uh, uh, previously uh, done by a human, you have to keep uh, in, um, in, uh, in mind building trust with the users as you're doing this replacement. So use your uh, good old change management practices to make that successful. Prioritize uh, the trust aspect in uh, a machine learning feature. Don't let it be an afterthought um, uh, towards the end. Build fallback scenarios because 
sometimes the model is not going to perform well and um, you have to keep that in mind and have a, pl a plan B. Um, uh, it, so, so for example, if the model results are, are not as expected, then you revert back to an, an old process that was there before the machine learning feature, you know, depending on um, your product and the feature that you're building. This, this is a diagram from an article I've written. You'll find it on my uh, website. And the article is dedicated to building trustable machine learning products and things that we have done in the past, such as have the model be tuned through uh, business rules and then allow a user to set those. Um, have uh, somewhere in the uh, product and, and uh, give access at least to an admin for uh, some sanity validation reports for model outputs or a sample review of a model's outputs. Um, and something we've done in the past is, especially if, if this is a very machine learning heavy operation uh, that's replacing a human decision, give the users the ability to override model outputs if they're not happy with them and give the users the ability to affect model parameters. In, and, and that's a way of both combining uh, the human experience and the business experience uh, that the stakeholders would have with the power of machine learning. So you'll, you'll see more about this in, in the article, uh, but the, the two takeaways here is to keep trust uh, first and foremost in your mind. Um, and then secondly, uh, the takeaway is we have seen that with time, also because models get better, users trust the uh, models more and features that we have had, such as overriding model results, actually tend to get used uh, less as time goes on. Okay, so you, now you, you feel you know what to do and you're jumping into building your machine learning, first machine learning feature. Definitely a moment to celebrate, but I also want you to um, be thoughtful as you do that and we'll give you some tips for uh, building your first machine learning feature. Start small, Th think with a quick win mentality. If you even start with without building a model um, on your own and use a model from an existing library, that's a success. It will allow you to test your process and structure, uh, build out the infrastructure as you go and understand what you need. And finally, make sure that you choose the best product problem and not the best machine learning problem because more often than not, these are two different things. Some pitfalls uh, to avoid that I've, that I've seen companies fall into uh, in the past. Machine learning is a, a powerful tool. And as the saying goes, if you have a hammer, uh, all problems turn into nails. So uh, be very conscious to not become technology centric and to be uh, user cent centric. Um, if you are in Toronto like me, then you've probably seen that uh, there are startups that do AI for insert between pre uh, brackets, whatever uh, uh, business problem there is out there. And we have seen that a lot of these startups fail. And the reason why, um, in, in my opinion, is because they've become uh, sort of too fond of the uh, technology to the point of lo losing user focus. Resist the temptation to in talk about the technology in your product messaging. And I sometimes this comes from business teams that are excited about machine learning. However, as good product managers know, the uh, technology should be um, in, as inconspicuous as possible for the user. So it shouldn't be spelled out in, say, the UI uh, of the product, for example. And Eng good engineers 
would want to build things right and do things well. And this, in our situation, might translate into wanting to build out um, a whole data infrastructure before we even start working on machine learning features. I, I would advise against that because um, you are not going to really know what you need until you start building uh, uh, your machine learning features. So I, I would advise that you find some middle ground between building some infrastructure while you're building your first features and only invest after you get a picture of what is it that you're uh, going to do with uh, machine learning and if it's even going to be an investment worth making in uh, your special case. So the last words I want to leave you with, uh, machine learning is magical, but it's not a magic wand. I, I want you to be both excited about the potential that it could unblock for you, but at the same time, be uh, aware of the challenges and to go about it thoughtfully, um, be business and user focused and uh, not get too fond of the technology. Um, Sometimes you, you realize that at the start, but as time goes by, sort of the technology takes over. Um, so as good product managers do, you should always uh, see it as part of your job to keep your team focused on the strategy and the priorities. And pay attention to team structure and dynamics. These could make it or break it in terms of the success of your machine learning initiatives. Um, or at least the efficiency of the uh, team's operations. Thank you so much for uh, listening. Um, if you want to connect in the future, you can go to my uh, website, nahlasalem.com, and hope you found this uh, useful, um, and uh, see you perhaps in the next talk. Cheers.